Well, I got the little hand sharpener tool on the uh, 24 inch McCullough 610 Pro Mac, whatever the hell it is, it's from 1981. Um, old chainsaw, it still works good. Uh, first thing I wanted to do was tighten up the chain. Got it up there pretty damn tight. It's a half inch wrench. Loosen that up, and you got a screw in the front there. Tighten the chain. Um, not using a vise. The reason I got this. I was thinking about getting like a little grinder tool or something electric, but I says, you know, if you're out in the field, what do you do, right? Suppose you're someplace where there's no plug. I mean, maybe I got my Jeep with an inverter on it too. Maybe that could be a possibility, but maybe I'll do that later. But uh, this thing is pretty cool though. If you can see over here, it's got, you know, 35 degrees. I think this chain had 30 on it. I saw a 30 on it. I think that's the mark for 30. Uh, 30 degrees but and 35 is like typical um, you can put it on 10 degrees for a ripper chain which is like I think that's what you use with the Alaskan chainsaw like uh, you different a different angle cut but if I did that I would probably use this for the Alaskan chainsaw like a small one uh, the Alaskan chainsaw mill um, a small mill this is a 24 inch 60 cc is about the minimum for pretty much cutting up planks and I would probably get another 18 inch for just cutting up the logs, you know, just cutting down trees and logs. If I was going to rip with it, rip some lumber, the Alaskan chainsaw, I would use the rip chain for this and set it on 10 degrees. And the other chain would be at th sharpened at 35 degrees. Now this chain, I think this is made in Portugal, this thing is from Oregon. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was wondering if it was made in China. Made in Portugal. Yeah, whatever. Get Portugal, whatever. Anyway, um, for a 24 inch chain, you're going to use a 736 inch file. Like a lot of other ones, you're going to be using a 316. Got to make sure you use the right size file. Now, this thing also has an adjustment right here for having an angle up and down. So I got it up a hair, you know, just like five degrees or something. Because I'm not really sure where the hell this thing is set at, but I know it's dull as hell, so whatever I do to it, it's going to be a hell of a lot better. <laughs> you know? Then the other thing I did was I put some, not grease, I didn't put any oil or anything on the file. You want the file nice and sharp. Uh, you don't want it to get it oiled up because then it gets clogged up. But I put grease up on this thing because this, this slides back and forth in here in the guides. And works a lot smoother with grease versus metal to metal so not too bad Let's see if I get the camera set up here man yeah basically I don't know this chain is dull as shit so I'm probably gonna do this a lot more and you press harder going forward than you do pulling back Probably should mark it to, uh, you know, then this thing has a spring tension on it. Pulls up out of the way. Move the chain up a little bit. It's, it's pretty tight. <laughs> it's a tight mother, 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 mo, 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 you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, get it up to the next link. Go on to the next thing. And you saw this, this, I don't know if you looked at this other video, I was, I was starting up this chainsaw, and, um, it was dull, man. It was a dull sucker, man, I can tell you that right now. And, running good, runs good, just dull. Dull, dull damn chainsaw. Yeah, is that up to the next one yet? Exciting, huh? Shouldn't have made this damn so chain so tight because I was trying to get it tight so it, it gets a nice cut on there. But here you go. Wait a minute, I, I went past it. There it is. Well, I'd probably get it like that. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Let me shut this camera off, do a couple adjustments here. You actually think that thing here, this thing here, is supposed to be the backstop for the tooth. So when you're pressing on it, don't go nowhere, but 
They ain't going nowhere anyway because the uh, chain is so damn tight. I don't think this will take more than 10 minutes to do this, so we should cut good after that. Now the other thing is, I want to make sure I keep these files in this plastic thing so I don't get screwed up. It's in my toolbox, on the bottom of my toolbox. This way, you know, it's in here so it ain't going to get dang or damaged or screwed up or full of grease or something. And I think the way to clean those files too is uh, use some starting fluid. Just douse them down, a little light brush, they should come nice and clean. Um, it's not really that sharp yet, man. I probably got to go over this a bunch, man. This chain's been through hell and back. But I can tell you one thing. I forget what the hell you call these things up here in the front. But I know even with a dull chain, if you got these things digging in the wood and you're going like this with the chainsaw, even with a dull chain, that thing will work, man. It just it puts pressure on it. And I usually load it up with a load of oil on a bar. As a matter of fact, what I do is, um, yeah, you put oil in here to oil the chain. But what I like to do is take a pan of the used motor oil, and I just dunk the chain, <laughs> chain in there with the bar and everything, even when it's getting hot over here on the tip. That cools it right down, man. I've never seen anybody do that shit. It's just like the oil pan, you know, the stuff you change with your dirty oil. I just put the dirty oil in there from your oil changes in a pan. So when you're using this chainsaw and the bar's getting hot and stuff like that, I just dunk the whole bar in, a, in the oil pan with the dirty oil. Soaks it down, gets all in that sprocket, gets the bar really good. And, you know, you got to watch when you start it up again. It flings a little oil, but, uh, you know, it makes it makes everything last a long time. I can tell you that one, one that's for sure, so... That's one cool thing. So I'll just keep on trucking on with this damn thing. And uh, I gotta hold it with my hand. But you know, I got this because I had the other kind that wasn't gripped onto the bar. It had like, um, like you, the file would be in this thing like this, and you would look and it would have the angles on this thing that the file was in. And you would cut it by hand. But you can actually, when you're doing it that way, when you're doing it by hand, freehand more or less with a guide you can be going too much this way that way or up and down and all that kind of crap with this thing it's all locked in I really don't think you can go wrong with this the problem is this chain so damn dull it's probably gonna needs a lot of sharpening by hand and then once it's okay it'll probably take you five minutes to touch it up and since this is a 24 inch bar and it, 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 I know it's not humongous but you go down to Home Depot and Lowe's they don't have any 24 inch they got 20 you got a lot of 18 they got some 20s but they don't have any 24 inch I'd have to order this chain of bar online if I ever have to replace it but there seems to be quite a bit of meat on there yet the other thing you usually got to watch out for is this see this if this is higher than that then it's gonna skip over the cutting edge you want to have this slightly lower than this. I don't know what the hell you call those things again, but this has got to be slightly lower than that. So as you sharpen this chain, you notice this angle is down a little bit. It makes this a little bit lower. So a lot of times you got to flat file this a little bit too to bring this down. But um, I don't think it'll take me too long. I just don't want to show you the whole damn boring thing, but. Uh, this thing I like because it's it's locked on precision wise this way right plus this way you know and on top of it um, you can take this any damn place you want for one and you can change that angle from the standard 35 I think this was a 30 degree because it's had a little 30, has all these little 30 on here. I think it was a 30 degree chain, but I'm putting it on a 35, which is pretty standard. Uh, but you, if you want to sharpen a ripper chain, you can put it on 10. So, and it's it's all metal, you know, I mean, maybe it's not, you know, stainless steel or high strength steel, but at least it's made out of metal. It's not made out of freaking stupid plastic. A lot of these things I've seen were made out of plastic. 
especially the ones that are motors in them and I thought they were a piece of crap and I'm sticking with old school takes me a little longer to do this and uh, we shall see how it comes out it should be alright though yeah the damn thing did work um, you know after I got a hang of it it, it turns out the um, there's a little stop this little piece right back here that right there the end that gets right behind here so when you're pushing on this sharpening it, it keeps it keeps it from going back and I mean it's it is a really it's really locked on the angles locked on every which way so uh, it, it does do a very good job so fortunately it got kind of dark out here because uh, I started doing this right at the sunset but uh, it feels uh, feels sharper I can tell I can tell it's sharper so it should work pretty good doesn't work perfect um, I'll just go over it again because it has been very 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 dull and um, but that is it's not bad I got the hang of it after a while it's about 33 bucks plus you buy the files that's the only thing and normally you would need uh, 3 16 inch files for like a 16 or 18 inch, 18 inch chainsaw but this is a 24 inch so it takes us 7 30 seconds